So hi everyone and welcome to this uh, video on two-part tariffs on our discussion on second-degree price discrimination and in particular we're going to be dealing with uh, the case of two-part tariffs under identical consumers. So uh, we're going to have two separate cases, one wherein uh, we have identical consumers and one wherein we have heterogeneous consumers or varying consumers. And we're going to see how second degree price discrimination uh, works differently compared to perfect price discrimination or your first degree price discrimination. And let's see uh, how uh, the difference in second degree price discrimination is uh, according to the various types uh, of second degree price discriminations that there are. So this is the very first one that we'll discuss. And uh, it's a case we're in all consumers are identical. So, of course, as you can already kind of uh, tell, it's not a very realistic case that all consumers are identical, but it does, it can potentially exist if uh, the behavior of all consumers in the market, um, or you have a very specialized type of market, which means that consumers largely behave similarly, and maybe this is an applicable strategy for that monopolist. So uh, if all the consumers are, are identical, the premise is that in, under a two-part tariff uh, pricing system, the monopolist can set the two-part tariff in a manner that it has the same properties as a perfect price discrimination case. That is, it is able to extract all of the consumer surplus. Okay? And this goal of extracting the entire consumer surplus happens um, in this manner. First, okay, the monopolist will try and set okay, um, or, or figure out setting the per unit price to P is equal to MC, which, as we know, is the perfectly competitive case. And it maximizes the potential consumer surplus. So in un we know that under perfect competition, we're in this condition holds, that FOC holds, we have the highest uh, potential consumer surplus. And that consumer surplus holds when there is no lump sum fee charged. Then, since the monopolist uh, has identical consumers, what it can do is it can charge the first part of the tariff, which is the lump sum fee, okay, slightly less than the potential consumer surplus, just a little bit less than that potential surplus, consumer surplus. And uh, what we're going to note is that since the monopolist doesn't know exactly each uh, consumer's demand curve, it must guess how high a lump sum fee it must set. Okay, And essentially, this lump sum fee okay, will most certainly be less than the potential consumer surplus. Well, well, why is that the case? Well, if it charges something higher than that, okay, higher than that, it, it stands to lose all of its customers. So let's show this in an example. So um, suppose the monopolist has a, a constant marginal cost, which is equal to 10. And it estimates that each consumer or each consumer in its market has a demand curve that they face of being equal to P is equal to uh, AT minus Q, where Q is the quantity demanded of each individual consumer. So um, in, under this scenario, the optimal, okay, the optimal uh, price quantity, uh, price quantity, uh, supplied by the firm uh, and in this market satisfies the condition. So it satisfies P is equal to your marginal cost, right? So it satisfies this condition. And uh, if, if we just plug it in, so we have P, which is 80 minus Q is equal to the marginal cost. Well, the marginal cost is constant and that marginal cost is 10. Okay, and if we solve for Q, we get, uh, we transpose this to the other side, we get Q star is equal to, uh, we, uh, we get Q star is equal to 70. So that's the uh, amount that the consumer will buy according to his or her demand. And the price that will be charged, well, we just plug this in. So that's P is equal to 80 minus 70, which means that P star is equal to 10. So 
the optimal uh, per unit price is equal to 10. Okay, so because uh, again, it must satisfy the condition that P is equal to MC in this case, so that that's the fixed per unit uh, cost that it will do. But our question is, what's the optimal lump sum fee that will be charged? So the optimal, okay, the optimal L or your lump sum fee satisfies the condition, satisfies the condition L should be less than the potential consumer surplus. So to get that lump sum fee, okay, essentially all we're going to do is we're going to try to get consumer surplus. So that's L, okay, that's L star is less than consumer surplus star, which is something equal to Q equal to zero until uh, Q equal to 70, right, by our formula, then 80 minus uh, Q dQ minus uh, the total cost, right, the total cost, uh, which is uh, the total variable cost in this case. So that's the per unit price, which is 10, uh, the marginal cost rather, times the number of units per consumer, which is 70, right? And if we evaluate this, so that's L star, less than consumer surplus, equal to um, ATQ minus uh, 0.5Q squared all over, uh, well, it's going to be like that because we simplified it already. And then this is uh, until, from 0 until 70, minus uh, 10 times 70, that's 700. Okay, so... From there, okay, we can simplify it. So that's L star less than consumer surplus, which is equal to um, 80 times 70 minus 0 0.5 Q squared. So Q squared, that's going to be uh, 70 squared minus 700. And we find that L star should be less than consumer surplus, which is equal to 2,450. Okay, so we get this uh, conclusion here. And we said that we can imply that the consumer the consumer pays a lump sum fee, L star, which is less than 2,450 for the right, the right to use the product And the per unit price that will charge is equal to 10, okay, per unit consumed. Okay, so those are the key information that we want to know. But we also want to try and delineate what's going to be the potential profit of this monopolist under this case. And we concluded that essentially it's going to be very similar to its profit in under a, uh, a perfect price discrimination because it's going to be able to reap the entire consumer surplus. So uh, what we know is that since, okay, so since, okay, since your MC is constant, okay, so notice MC was constant at 10, at uh, 10, and say there are fixed costs, uh, there are fixed costs. So just to be more general about it, because there could be fixed costs, okay? Then what we know is that MC is equal to your average variable cost, which is equal to 10, okay? Because if you recall from here, this uh, 10 times 70, 10 is the marginal cost, 70 is the quantity produced. So they would, uh, the, for the monopolist would need to produce 70 units, which is a variable cost, which varies by Q, right? So um, say that's the case where the AVC is the average variable cost of producing for each and every consumer there, then we can get total variable cost, uh, uh, it's essentially just going to be equal to AVC times Q. Because if you, if you recall, okay, AVC is equal to TVC over Q, right? So essentially, if you want to find out total variable cost, it's just going to be AVC times Q, and that's going to be equal to 10 times your Q, which is 70. Therefore, your total variable cost is equal to 700, okay? Therefore, the producer surplus 
per each consumer consumer is a uh, ps is equal to p times q so if you remember our uh, our formula earlier that's p times q okay uh, from the last video rather plus the lump sum fee or the subscription fee minus the variable cost which is some function of q and we're going to see that this is going to be equal to 10 times 70 plus uh, something which is slightly less than 2450 minus 700 okay and essentially these two things will cancel out because this is going to be positive 700 that's negative 700 we're going to get a producer surplus which is slightly less than 2450 okay and that's going to be the case so uh with this scenario what we're going to notice is that this entire area here, right? The area below the demand curve above price, this is consumer surplus. And essentially the area is equal. So this is um, your consumer surplus, okay, which is equal to 2,450. And essentially that's gonna be reaped, okay? That's gonna be reaped by the firm as a profit because it, it knows since it's identical consumers, it can get that entire uh, consumer surplus portion of each and every consumer. Now, if there are uh, N identical consumers, so because there's not just one consumer, right? There could be a lot of consumers or N identical consumers. And say there are fixed costs, just to be more general about it, there are fixed costs then the profit is just going to be equal to your number of consumers times the producer surplus less the fixed cost, right? So that's going to be equal to uh, something um, which is uh, going to be uh, less than, okay, 2,450, okay, because that's the producer surplus times N minus the fixed cost. And the profit of the of the monopolist rather will lie uh, somewhere here, okay, around that. We we don't know exactly the value because of course we don't know how many identical consumers there are and if the firm has fixed costs. So we leave a general answer as our final answer here. And if you notice, if F C is equal to zero, then the firm's total profit is just equal to the total uh, lump sum fees, which is essentially the consumer surplus that it was able to extract given that it knew uh, each uh, consumer's, um, since all the consumers are identical, it knew uh, their specific demand curves. So uh, that's our case for an identical consumer. And in the next video, we'll tackle a slightly more complex